Apple OS X Lion and the new Mac Minis with Thunderbolt. Are you going to get one? Also, NVIDIA at SIGGRAPH 2011. They've got contests, they've got education, and they've got new products. Sounds like they've got a lot of stuff going on. And also, Edward Tufty. Sure, you know him for spark lines, but have you ever heard of slope graphs? This week in NVIDIA. <laughs> We've got a lot to cover this week on This Week in Viz, especially since last week's podcast was a complete bust. As you've probably noticed, there's been a lot of changes in the podcast, both in the format and the style, most of which is thanks to some new equipment that I've got and the fact that I'm doing all of my editing now in Premiere. So bear with me while I get up to speed on how to use some of the fancy features. So the big story this week was from NVIDIA, talking about some of the new stuff they're going to have at SIGGRAPH 2011 this year. I won't bore you with all the details, but it sounds like they've got some interesting contests, their usual sketching contest, as well as a drawing for a fancy new Lenovo tablet based on the Tegra systems. In addition, they've got their usual innovation theater and some student experience stuff, but they've also got, every day, the new Tech Talks. They've got some big stuff on schedule, highlighting some things such as VFX trend spotting with GPU performance, uh, lighting, rendering, and lots of other stuff. So it's all in the press release. You'll want to go there to get all the details. SIGGRAPH is a mere two weeks away, so you, you might want to go ahead and start planning your schedule now if you plan on hitting everything. Of course, whenever I talk about NVIDIA, I also have to talk about AMD. Now some slides leaked out this week talking about the new Radeon HD 6990M, a mobile notebook GPU that AMD is touting as the world's fastest. The specs that are released look pretty impressive. Really all we have to go on so far is the hard specs and a somewhat impressive uh, performance graph, of course, provided by AMD, so it's a little bit suspect. Uh, it offers 1,120 SPUs with 56 texture units all running at 715 megahertz. That's a pretty nice boost from their existing mobile stuff. Uh, it will also support Ifinity, but will not support any type of switchable graphics like the Optimus system. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's already listed to come out in a couple of notebooks soon. Of course, this week, if you were reading the news at all, you no doubt heard about Apple's big releases. Of course, they came out with OS X Lion, the new uh, operating system for all of the Apple notebooks and uh, desktops, which supports, in addition to many other things, OpenGL 3.2. So hopefully we'll see some nice stuff coming out about that. In addition, they revved their MacBook Airs, their Mac Minis, and their displays. They're now basing everything very heavily on Thunderbolt, uh, dropping their existing DVI and DisplayPort stuff. All in all, it looks like they've really made a pretty nice boost to all of their equipment. It's all still based on AMD systems, so if you're a CUDA developer, you're going to have to hold off or you're going to have to add in your own discrete card. No details yet on any of that. Now, one announcement that came out this week that I wanted to cover is uh, a couple of interesting things in the field of image compression. A while back, we talked about some of the stuff like Hypex and WebM coming to the uh, image compression space. There's a new one that was talked about then but is now officially available called JPEG Mini. It's available as a website where you can upload a photo, they'll compress it, and then allow you to preview and download it. Uh, they boast some impressive stuff like 5x compression with no loss in perceivable image quality. I've tested it myself, and of course each image is different, so I've been getting somewhere around 2x. But they're right, I haven't been able to find any perceivable difference in the image quality. I've been testing on some rather large uh, 8 megapixel images, and at full zoom I can't see any real difference. But I am getting a 2 to 1 file size uh, improvement. It's pretty impressive, and the best thing is you don't need anything special to view the images. They're still just standard JPEGs when they come out the other end. So this could be useful if you're really worried about file sizes, such as webmastering. Uh, you can go to their website and try it out. It's all free. Also, you can try a uh, interesting Windows-based tool called Riot for the Radical Image Optimization tool. It's a simple JPEG compression tool that allows you to view an image on the left and then its compressed counterpart on the right and interactively change the parameters to make sure you get the quality you want. Another tool that might be great for webmasters are those people that are interested in crushing an image as far as they possibly can 
without destroying it. So moving on into some more business-related news, there was a couple of interesting acquisitions this week. Uh, first off was that 3D Systems uh, acquired Alibre. Now these are both popular names in the 3D CAD and printing spaces for a lot of mesh optimization and natural modeling techniques. So that alone was pretty impressive. It'll be a great add to their portfolio. But then Autodesk came out and acquired Pixlr. Now Pixlr is a web-based image editing tool uh, similar to several of the options that have come out in the last year or two. The, uh, now this seems to be particularly involved with Autodesk's sketchbook tool which is their uh, sketching and drawing tool. It's uh, made a big release on the iPad as well. Uh, and it looks like they hope to add in some web-based editing and photo sharing tools onto their website. Could be interesting for collaborative uh, environments and such. We'll just have to wait and see where everybody goes with it. Another thing that I have to admit I'd never heard of this week was a great article from uh, some people about, uh, from Charlie Park actually, about Edward Tufte's slope graphs. Of course, everybody knows Edward Tufte. He's the uh, fabled father of uh, information visualization. And uh, his spark lines have gotten a lot of success. Although before spark lines, he came up with the visualization method he called slope graphs. It's very much like the uh, old grade school stuff, match the column on the left with the column on the right. The interesting thing is, done properly, you can actually read trends in the data based on the slopes of the lines in the middle. It's an amazingly naive and simple visualization method that I'm really surprised hasn't caught on before. Uh, you can get all the details in the article. Another big thing that made a splash two weeks ago when we missed the podcast was a website called Visually. Now, Visually aims to do for infographics what sites like Twitter have done for everything else. Make it as plug and chug as possible. Now, they've already got somewhere, they claim, 700 open visualizations created by big names like David McCandless and Jess3 that allow you to go and use their open data repositories or input your own data and basically use those pre-made graphics as templates. One of the ones that they've had out that's been kind of entertaining to play with is their Twitter visualizer, which attempts to analyze your Twitter stream and guess some about you and compare you against some famous celebrity. It's interesting to try out. We'll have to see if it actually garners any kind of mainstream success. Uh, one other thing I wanted to cover is that the International Science and Engineering Visualization Challenge is coming up. They've released a great video showcasing lots of the entries and winners since 2006. The uh, competition details are all available on their website, but this is for people that are really high into scientific visualization, not so much InfoViz. But if you wanted to enter, all the details are there. So this week's infographic of the week is an interesting piece called The Full Cost of Computer Data Loss. Now, uh, this one attempts to take a look at not only the physical costs of actually getting your data recovered, if it's that important, but the downtime and lost man hours and productivity that come while you're waiting for your data to come back. This is actually put together by, of course, a data loss recovery company, DRG, but the data itself is pretty interesting, and it's presented in a nice, clean format, very easy to read, very nice to look at. You can go get all the details on the website. So that's all we've got to talk about this week. I hope we managed to pack it all in under the time limit, and we'll see you again next week.